four part, part one, part two, part three, and part four. Now look at part one. Part one. You are going to hear a conversation which happened in a travel agency. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now we will play the recording. Listen to the tape and answer questions one to five. Hi, I would like to make a reservation for a round trip plane ticket from London to New York. Welcome to the student travel agency, London to New York. Let me see if we have any student specials for that flight. Yes, we do. In fact, what days would you like to fly? I am looking for a flight around the tenth of October or so. And how about your return date? Ideally, the thirty-first of October. Let me check our computers to see if these dates are available. Are you looking for economy class or first class? Economy class will be just fine. We have an open flight on the tenth, but for your returning flight, the thirty-first of October is already fully booked. If you want to upgrade to first class, there are openings for the thirty-first. Just a few seats left, though. How much do I have to add for first class? First class will be around twenty to twenty-five percent more. Well, that is not worth it. I would rather just fly on another day. Do I have any other options? There are open seats back to London on the first of November. There are openings for first class that day too. No, I won't be able to do that because I have to work. Is there anything before the thirty-first? Maybe the thirtieth or twenty-ninth? Let me check. You can fly on the twenty-ninth, but not the thirtieth. Hmm. The twenty-ninth is a little bit early. Is there any way I can be on a waiting list of some sort? Of course, but you should still confirm a return date just to be safe. Okay. How about if I book a return date on the twenty-ninth? And add my name to the waiting list for the thirty-first. Can I do that? Sure, I can do that for you. Do you also want to add your name on the waiting list for the thirtieth? Also, I would recommend this in the scenario that you do not get the flight for the thirty-first. That is a good idea. How much will the round trip cost? I will calculate your price for you. Your total will be five hundred and sixty-five pounds, not including tax. Now look at questions six to ten. Now listen to the tape and answer questions six to ten. That's not too bad. Is there any discount for students? That is already including the discount. Without the discount, the price is easily over six hundred pounds. Okay, that sounds good then. Please put me down for those dates. I will need your information, name and student identification number, please. Kenneth Conley, student ID nine two. One two three zero two zero. Your phone number, please. Eight seven zero five two one zero nine. Please tell me your mailing address. Three five four, Westchester Drive, London. Thank you very much, sir. How would you like to pay for the ticket? I think I will pay in cash. Well, you don't need to pay right now. Just when you come to pick up the tickets. You will need to pick up the tickets at least two weeks before departure. That is no problem. One quick question: What happens if, for some reason, I need to cancel my trip? The student discount tickets are unfortunately non-refundable. However, if your cancellation is before twenty-four hours of takeoff time, 
then you can reschedule your flight for another day. If the cancellation is within 24 hours, then you forfeit your ticket. I understand. Well, thank you very much. I will see you next week. See you then. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a talk by a councillor on plans for the development of an old industrial site. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 13. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 13. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Councillor Norma Boyd and welcome to this exhibition about the development of the old paper mill factory and gasworks site, which has been lying unused for more than a decade. There has been pressure on the council to use the land to build a training centre and a small business park. However, we have been encouraged by local people to create an open area for the benefit of the community, providing much-needed space for recreation. And I now have pleasure in announcing that the plans for the creation of a park, to be called Park Royal, and for flats, have now been approved. I'm also pleased to announce that we have secured sponsorship from local organisations. More detailed plans of the developments are available from the Council website, details of which are in your pack. In the meantime, I'd just like to take you through the plan here on the screen. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 14 to 20. Now listen carefully and answer questions 14 to 20. If we start here at the bottom, you can see Parkside Street, where the main entrance to the park is. On the left of the entrance, in the bottom left-hand corner of the plan, there will be a block of 40 studio flats. On the other side of the entrance, there will be some workshops for local businesses. There will also be another entrance here, on the top right, which leads into Pear Street. Here, in the centre of the park, we will have an ornamental lake with paths radiating north, south, east and west to the different areas of the park. In the top right-hand corner, just by the Pear Street entrance, there will be a large sports area with two football pitches and four tennis and volleyball courts. Just here, beside the pitches, on the same side of the path, will be an outdoor swimming pool. Now, in the top left-hand corner, a walled flower garden is planned with a rockery and a water feature with walkways, seats and lots of shady areas for the summer. Next to this, a sculpture garden is also planned. Now, let's see. Just here, 
below the walled garden, there will be a grassy amphitheatre with a permanent covered stage for open-air concerts. We hope that local schools and colleges will use this theatre to showcase student work. In the bottom left-hand corner of the plan, you can see that above the block of flats, there will be a play area for children, and directly to the right of this, just near the main entrance, there will be a wild area. More trees will be planted here, and in the middle will be built an educational centre for use by local schools to encourage children to take care of the wildlife and look after the trees and plants. And finally, in the bottom right-hand corner of the park will be a cafe, opening on to Pear Street. And now for questions. If anyone would like to ask anything, I and my colleagues are only too happy to oblige. Yes, the lady in the front row, if I could have your... That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between Wolfgang and his new friend Mary, who has already been at the college for a few months. In the first part of the conversation, they're talking about a social activity program at college. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hi Wolfgang. Ah, oh, Mary, how are you? Oh, fine. How's it going? Have you just had a class? Yes, I just finished my listening class. It was a little bit difficult. Yeah, yeah. It's always difficult when you first arrive somewhere. I found it quite hard when I first arrived. Mm. But you know what really made a difference? It was going on these social activities that the, the college arranges for you. It kind of gives you a chance to practice your English and... Mm. I've heard that the college is pretty good about organizing those kinds of things. How do, how do I find out about it? Well, I've just picked up a schedule today. Let's... Let's have a look at it. Here it is. What is it? A schedule for, for this week or...? Yeah, yeah, let's have a look. OK, yeah. Maybe we can do some things together, in fact. Yeah, that would be great. So... Let's see. What are they doing tonight? Monday night? Well, they've... So... Oh! They've got singing with guitar. So I went to this last week. It's... Oh, really? Yes, it's quite good fun. Is it pretty good? Yeah, yeah. What do they do? Do they have a concert or...? It's... they teach you, um, modern and traditional songs. Hmm, well, I'm not much of a singer, but, uh... Oh, come on. You should go. It's really good fun. Well, I suppose it'd be a good way to practice my English. Yeah, because you learn kind of British folk songs and things. It's... yeah, it's really interesting. Oh, but look at that. That starts at 8. But I notice at 9 o'clock there's a, a late-night coach to Cambridge for a film. I think I'd want to try, go to try that. Uh, what time does this singing thing finish, do you know? Oh, well, usually it, it kind of lasts about two hours. But, I mean, 
We can always leave earlier. They don't mind. Do... Oh, OK. So we can do both, then? Yeah, so... Right, so that's at nine o'clock. Yeah, yeah. What movie is it? Let me see. Oh, oh, it's Rocky. Have you seen it? Rocky. Rocky? Oh, that's... That's uh, the one with Richard Dreyfus, isn't it? Richard Dreyfus? No, it's to Sylvester Stallone. Oh, yes, I remember now. American movie. Yes, I haven't seen that. I want to see that. Good, let's go to that. All right. Oh, OK. Oh, did you see on Tuesday that there's a tennis tournament? Tennis? Hmm, what time is that? Well, that's at four o'clock in the afternoon. Where is it? Is it on campus or...? No, no. It's at w Wembley, so that's in London. Oh, oh, so that, it's pretty far away then. What time will it be coming back? Um, so it, the coach gets back at midnight. Oh, midnight. Well, hmm, tell you what, I think maybe I'd better cancel on that, because I've got a class Wednesday morning, and I'm afraid, at about 8.30, I'm afraid if I came back that late, I probably would, uh, I'd be very tired in class, and actually I... I'm more into football myself, anyway. Oh, football? Well, did you see there's a football match on Wednesday? Oh, yeah? Well, who's, who's playing? Let's see. Oh, it's England and Brazil. Oh, I really want to see that. Would you like to go together? Yeah, sure. What time is it? Let me see. It says 15.30. So that would be 3.30. 3.30, huh. Now, I've got a... I have a lecture uh, right after lunch on Wednesday at 1.30. Uh-huh. What lecture's that? Oh, well, there's a journalist coming from the BBC. He's going to talk about his experiences as a foreign correspondent. Oh, that sounds interesting. Would you, would you like to go? Yeah, what time do you say it was? Uh, right after lunch, around 1.30. Oh, 1.30. I have a class then. What a sh... Oh, yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Well... What time does your class finish? Finishes, it's an hour long, so it finishes at 2.30. Oh, well, I shouldn't imagine. The lecture shouldn't go much later than that either. So after your class and after my lecture, we can get together to go to the football game. OK, so we can meet... Let's see, maybe 3 o'clock, or, or maybe 3.15. Yeah, I think 3.15 would be all right. OK, where should we meet? Well, usually these, on these kind of trips, the coach leaves from in front of the dining hall. So maybe we could meet there. OK. So in front of the dining hall at 3.15. That sounds fine. Yeah, right. On Thursday, there's an international evening in school hall. Yeah, all songs and dances performance by students from all over the world. That's very interesting. Would you like to go and see? Yes, when is it? It will start at 8. Shall we meet at 7.50 in front of the school hall? Fine, 7.50 in front of the school hall. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Oh, and another thing I definitely want to do this weekend uh, is to go and see... Uh, they're going to have a trip to Stratford on Avon. I think it's on... let me see... what day is that? Friday, I think my roommate told me. Oh, Friday. Would you like to go to that? Yeah. But are you sure it's Friday? I thought that's what he said, but I'm, I might have been mistaken. Well, usually these things are on weekends. Right. Let's see here. Oh, you're right, yeah, Saturday morning, 8.30. Aha. Uh -huh. Right, Friday's the disco. Oh, disco. Yeah. So, actually, I've arranged to go with some of my friends. So, if you'd like to come along with us... Oh, that would be very nice, yeah. Yeah, you can meet some more students. Oh, well, what time? What time shall we go to that, then? Well, it starts at... what time? 
8.30, but we don't want to go too early. So let's say 9 or 9.30. Let's say 9.30. OK, yeah, we can meet there. Um, but we'd better not stay too late because the Stratford thing is uh, pretty early in the morning. The bus will be leaving at 8.30. Oh, yeah, right. So we want to make sure we get up for that. Yeah. Say, by the way, this trip, um, since it's uh, quite a f way away, do we have to pay anything extra for that or is it free? Hmm. Well, usually most of the trips are free. But, yeah, for these ones which are quite a distance away, then we usually have to pay a, a little bit extra. Is it a lot or...? No, it's usually about £25, something like that. Oh, well, do we have to tell them ahead of time that we're going to go? Yeah, usually you have to sign up a couple of days in advance, so... Oh, where, where do we do that? Um, well, you do that at the student services office. So you have to go and see one of the social activities officers. Oh, so I just tell them that I want to go and to pay my money and then sign my name. Well, I think I'll go ahead and do that today. Actually, I've got some free time right now. Do you know where I go to do that? Um, yeah, yeah. It's the, the student services office. It's just across the road from here. Oh, OK. Um, well, across the kind of... You mean the green building over there? Yeah, yeah. So it's on the second floor. Oh, OK. Well, tell you what, um, are you going to the Shakespeare thing? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Would you like me to go ahead and sign you up as well? Oh, yes, yeah, that'd be great. But, well, I haven't got any money on me at the moment. Oh, don't worry about the money, that's fine. You can pay me back this evening. I'll go and sign us now. And then when I meet you tonight at the singing, you can, uh, give me the money then. Oh, well, if, if you are sure, that'd be great. No, it's no problem. OK. Oh, is that the time? I'd better go. I've got a class. I'll be late. OK, sorry. I'll see you later then. All right. See you tonight. Bye. Bye. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You're going to listen to a talk about tea in the UK. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. During the 1930s, there was a popular song which had the title Everything Stops for Tea, and to millions of British people, a restful cuppa is still an ideal way to relax for a few minutes from the rigours of the day. The English custom of drinking tea has its roots in the 17th and 18th centuries. When first imported to Britain, the exotic cha, cha or cha, as the Chinese tea was variously called, was considered a man's drink to be enjoyed with colleagues at London coffee shops. These were popular meeting places for many walks of life, politicians, lawyers, poets, actors and writers. Many London clubs began in this manner, and the famous Lloyd's Insurance underwriters started out as Lloyd's Coffee House. In 1706, the first coffee house that offered tea 
was Tom's Coffee House, owned by Thomas Twining. He realised that he needed to introduce an added attraction to compete with the many other coffee houses in London, and tea was rare, exotic and extremely expensive. With these credentials, tea became an exclusive drink and enabled Twining to open a tea shop under the sign of the Golden Lion in the Strand. By the 18th century, the ladies of the more affluent classes were going China mad, using tea as an excuse for displaying their extravagant purchases of Chinese porcelain and Dresden tea sets. A comprehensive tea tray would consist of a teapot and stand, teacups and saucers, sugar bowl, milk jug and basin for discarded tea and tea leaves. Tea was still expensive and kept in locked tea caddies. Skilled craftsmen fashioned caddies of carved inlaid woods fitted with crystal and precious metals. To ensure the servants weren't tempted by this priceless commodity, the caddy was kept locked and only the mistress of the house held the key and prepared tea when guests came to visit. No well-brought-up young Englishwoman could consider herself socially acceptable unless she knew how to brew a proper cup of tea. As the 18th century progressed, changes in commerce and working hours resulted in the main meal of the day being taken much later in the evening. The prospect of lasting from breakfast until evening did not appeal to the Duchess of Bedford, who is usually credited with being the first to alleviate late afternoon hunger pangs by introducing a small four o'clock meal served with tea. With time, the light, wafer-thin toast or delicate white bread gave way to exotic fillings like tomato and egg, cucumber, chicken or potted shrimps, followed by buttered scones, crumpets or elegant pastries. The popularity of tea continued to spread, but it was not until 1839 that the first shipment of Assam tea, Indian tea was landed in Britain. A healthy trade with India was soon established, and tea clippers, like the Cutty Sark, now a museum in a dry dock at Greenwich, were reaching the peak of their sailing days. In 1879, the first limited shipments of Ceylon tea began to arrive, and by 1880 this had been firmly established alongside Indian and China teas, giving the broad range of teas that are available today. There have been few changes in three centuries of tea trading. London is still the centre, and indeed Twining still has a shop on the site of the original Tom's Coffee House at 216 The Strand. The name Twining has been linked with tea for over 280 years. Indeed, it was Richard Twining, in his capacity as chairman of the dealers of tea, who in 1784 persuaded Prime Minister William Pitt to reduce the high tax on tea, making the beverage more accessible to the general public. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the test. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to your IELTS listening answer sheet.